Hi, welcome to the Daring Estate. In today's virtual field trip, we're going to be focusing on the water cycle and its role in the ecosystems as we build a terrarium with a native plant inside. Today we're going to be building a terrarium, which is an enclosed ecosystem that supports the life of a plant or an animal. An ecosystem is a biological community wherein living things like plants or animals are interacting with their physical environment. Ecosystems around the world may look different, but they all have two things in common. They have biotic things, which are living things like animals and plants, and abiotic features like water, air, soil, and even rocks. Our terrarium is going to be supporting the life of a plant. All plants need the same basic elements to live. Water, nutrients in the soil, carbon dioxide produced by living things, radiant energy from the sun, and time and physical space to grow. The first step of building our terrarium is to choose a container in which our plant is going to live. Your container has to be transparent. We've decided to use a two liter bottle, but you could also use things like glass jars. The reason it has to be transparent is so that light can pass through, allowing your plant to go through the process of photosynthesis. To make it easier for us to put our supplies inside of our terrarium, we've decided to cut our bottle open, rather than trying to squeeze it all through this little lid at the top. When we cut it open, we leave a little bit attached so it opens and closes, like a treasure chest. Next, we're gonna begin by adding in the soil. Now, when most people think of soil, they usually think of dirt, but soil is actually made up of layers. We're going to be building up our soil layers one at a time. The first layer we'll be adding in is the bottommost layer, which is bedrock. In South Florida, our bedrock is called limestone. Limestone is unique because it's very porous, meaning it has a lot of little holes that help water to easily seep through it. In our terrarium, the bedrock, or the limestone, is going to help us by holding all of our extra water, acting sort of like an aquifer. The next layer we'll be adding in is our sand layer. Sand is created through the erosion of rock. In our terrarium, the sand will help to filter the water as it passes down into the rock layer. The next layer we'll be adding in is our dirt layer. The dirt layer is also known as the organic layer because this is the layer of soil in which most organisms live. Some of those organisms, like microscopic decomposers, are going to be living inside the soil we add in today. When they're living in here, they're going to be producing carbon dioxide for our plants to consume. They're also going to be breaking down nutrients into the soil from things like dead leaves that our plant produces. The next layer we'll be adding in is a small layer of mulch. This is not necessary, but if you do have access to it, it could be very helpful to your plant because it's going to provide an extra boost of nutrients, something for those decomposers to start breaking down right away. Next, it's time for us to choose our plant. We've decided to use wild coffee, which is a native plant to South Florida. Its scientific name is Psychotria nervosa. If you want to learn more information about that, check out our ethnobotany virtual field trip. When choosing a plant, it's important to make sure that your plant has all of its root system and it has leaves. This is going to ensure that it's able to survive. As you can see, it has the roots it needs to collect nutrients from the soil as well as water, and it also has the leaves that it needs to collect sunlight for photosynthesis. When we plant our plant inside of our bottle, it's important for us to make sure that the roots are completely covered in the organic layer of our soil. The easiest way to do this is by using your finger to make a little hole in the center of our terrarium, and then place the roots of your plant down into that hole be sure to be delicate because these roots are very sensitive. You're going to take your topsoil and simply pull it close around the stem of our plant to support it. The last step is to add water. We're going to be pouring about five seconds worth of water. The great thing about adding water to our terrarium is that we only have to do it one time. Once our bottle is closed, the water will be trapped inside. Each day, as the sun heats up our bottle, the water will evaporate from the bottom where the rocks are holding it, all the way up to the top of our bottle. Here, it will condense, meaning it will form clouds. And once those clouds get too heavy, they're gonna precipitate down inside of our bottle. Little drops of rain will fall down into the soil where our plant will collect what it needs and the excess will go right back down to the bottom where the rocks are. Finally, we're gonna be taping our bottle shut. 
We're gonna go around with about two rounds of tape just to make sure we have a secure, tight hold. If you are using a glass jar to build your terrarium, you won't have to go through this step. Just make sure that your lid is all the way tightened on. If you're missing the lid of your bottle or of your glass jar, you could use tape or even saran wrap to help close up your seal. We hope you enjoyed today's virtual field trip. If you plan to recreate this at home, be sure to share your photos and videos on Instagram with us at Discover Deering. See you next time.